Hello, Exiles. My name is Erolis, Ero for short, and in this video, I want to show you a build that works, Rage Vortex Berserker, a newly introduced skill for Path of Exile 3.15 Expedition League. In this extensive build guide, I will be showcasing and explaining how this skill works, the mechanics of this build, and will show you the entire path from a decent and very cheap League Starting Resolute Technique variant of this build to the insane DPS Creed variant. Rage Vortex is a new skill added to the game in the 3.15 Expedition League. But wait, you might ask, new? Expedition League? Do not worry, the build is not outdated. I started this build guide back in August and since then spent about 200 hours making this build guide. I decided to finish it and publish after tests and runs in Scourge League because I think an excellent bossing build that can one-shot conquerors with 25 million DPS on 10 to 15 exalt budget deserves to live and to be posted. Most of the audio is from Expedition League though. It is inspired by the Berserker Ascendancy and its use of Rage, a state of rampant furiousness, a state of berserking. For a Berserker, violence is not an answer, it is a question, and the answer is always yes. Rage Vortex costs life without any blood magic supports to destroy his enemies, a vehement Zerker fights to the death with little to no regard to his own life and Rage Vortex is a perfect depiction of that. At first glance, Rage Vortex appears like a frail and mediocre single-use counterfeit cyclone, but everything changes when it sacrifices Rage. When expending Rage, the skill snapshots all damage increases and reductions, melee distance to the target, Warcry exerts and buffs and launches a Blood Red Rage Storm. It has the appearance of the user's bladed melee weapon, being one or two-handed axes and swords towards the mouse cursor, spinning 250% more frequently, slowing down for magic mobs and stopping on rare and unique mobs. Each Rage Storm hit is a separate hit with unique calculations for crit chance on hit effects, etc., but they do not spend exerts. Best gameplay style is engaging from middle distance as the Rage Storm travels one and a half to two screens. Defensively, this build relies on armor and an insane amount of leech. Every Rage Storm hit leeches more than 1300 life, making this build almost immortal. However, you can only have one Rage Storm active at any time. While I would not recommend using the build as is in hardcore with enough defensive investment, it is certainly viable for it with some changes and it will be able to crush any content you throw this build in. Talking of content viability. This build is a potent person first and foremost. Mapping is a strong 7 out of 10 due to skill mechanics. To function properly, it requires the user to press a walker every few attacks. Corridor clear and convenient pack-sized AoE is great for most activities. Activities like Legion that require instant screen clear are not perfect, but definitely fine. Corridor maps like Cells and Atoll are perfect for the skill although with enough map density it performs great on any map. Bossing and single target activities like Metamorph and Essence are best for the build. In conclusion to the playstyle, it can be even attributed to a sort of damage over time build, in the sense of being able to launch the Rage Storm and concentrate on evading, managing flasks and generally staying alive while the skill is doing all the damage. These are skill shortcuts which I use with this build. Use this as a general guidance. Due to some RSI, thanks boy, I have to use main skill on R most of the time, so feel free to use something else there. Also, a good way to turn all auras at once, when they are not in hand sockets, is a weapon swap with auras on the main shortcut panel. Map mods. Only reflect physical damage is impossible, but reflected damage can be mitigated via skill tree and certain gear mods. Very annoying mod is Cannot Leech, which will require much more flasking than usual. The rest of curse mods, etc. are up to your gear and flask setups. Now, onto the skill links. Build guide features heavy use and depiction of different parts of the build in a very powerful third-party program called Path of Building Community Fork. To plan, store and share skill trees, skill gem links and notes with build updates and other relevant information. I will keep the POB links updated as long as this build will be viable to play. To import a build link into POB, you will need to go to the Import and Export menu and paste the build link into the pop-up window that appears 
on pressing the appropriate button. The main skill of the build, Rage Vortex, will be occupying our chest piece, gradually going from 4 link to 5 and later to 6 link. Next, we are linking melee physical damage, which gives us more melee physical damage, with quality granting increased melee physical damage in exchange of lowered attack speed, but it's hardly a downside. The next support gem is Brutality, giving us another huge more melee physical damage multiplier, but in exchange limiting us to only deal physical damage with the linked skill. Fortify is closing the initial 4 link, adding more melee damage and percent increased attack damage with quality. Also, it makes hits with linked skill grant us a powerful Fortify buff, making us take 20% less damage from hits. It is possible to use it in the Leap Slam setup, which we will be discussing later, replacing Fortify with Rage support, but it is not advised. Major changes to how Fortify works are coming in the near future, and it feels clunky to Leap Slam for Fortify anyway. The next link is Impale support, which grants us Impale chance and increased impale effect. Impale is a strong physical debuff that snapshots 10% of the initial hit up to 5 times by default and with each subsequent hit deals the recorded damage or reflects in game terminology to the target again. A very strong attack support gem that can essentially double our DPS. And last but not least is pulverize support that in exchange of less attack speed makes our skill have increased area of effect along with more melee area damage with additional increased attack damage with quality. A very generous trade-off. We are not using multi-strike in this gem setup, although it does show a big increase in our DPS numbers, attacks supported by multi-strike cannot be exerted. Of course, awakened versions of the gems can and should be used, but are not essential. Next is our Warcry setup, which we have two of, socketed in both hand slots. Our first gem is Enduring Cry, a war cry which grants us a big chunk of life regenerated over one second and grants us additional physical damage reduction and plus elemental resistances per endurance charge, a massive increase in survivability. The second gem is Intimidating Cry, which intimidates nearby enemies, making them take increased attack damage, makes our attacks overwhelm a portion of enemy physical damage reduction and makes our exerted attacks deal double damage. It is essentially a one 100% more multiplier to our damage, a must-have offensive option. Our next skill is Phase Run. It's a very short buff that grants us phasing, a buff that lets us move through enemies, increased movement speed and increased duration with range charges spent. While this buff is active, using any skill converts the Phase Run into a very short buff that grants us yet another more melee physical damage multiplier. The second Warcry Thrilling is crowned by new Battle Mage Cry, which grants us 30% increased critical strike chance at our maximum power, makes increases and in reductions to spell damage applied to attacks, but most importantly, triggers linked spells each time we attack with an exerted attack. The spell trigger is the part that is used in both Resolute Technique and Crit variants of the build, with the Crit variant benefiting from critical chance too. We will be triggering two spells, Blood Rage, a very theme-fitting self-damaging buff that deals some physical damage per second, which can be mitigated with physical damage reduction, and in exchange grants us with increased attack speed, life reach, and a chance to gain frenzy charge on kill. Yet another triggered gem is Berserker. It is a spell that burns our rage at rate of 5 rage per second, granting us a plethora of more multipliers. More damage with attacks, more attack speed, more movement speed, and less damage taken with additional increased attack damage with quality. Each of the spells is triggered in the order in which they are socketed, from top to bottom following the links. Order is important, and I strongly suggest slotting Blood Rage first for the initial attack speed and leech, along with frenzy charges generation needed for prolongation of phase run. Next is our aura setup in a 4 gem gear slot. Pride is our most important aura. It makes enemies in the radius take more physical damage, ramping up over 4 seconds. Next gem is Herald of Purity. At maximum level, it grants us more physical damage and summons a sentinel of purity on kill. Minions have life that can be killed, 
but add to our damage output while alive, helping with clear speed and killing off stragglers. Anomalous quality grants minion and chance to taunt enemies away from you, reducing incoming damage. Also, when you hit a rare or unique enemy, there's a chance to summon a sentinel that synergizes well with Rage Storm, having more than 20 hits per second, instantly spawning a full squad of sentinels while attacking a boss and distracting it from you. Additionally, sentinels count as allies for Rallying Cry buff, which can be used to grant a ton of additional DPS. But for a socket starved build, this may not fit with a lower budget. There are ways to build around this. Third gem is Dread Banner, an aura that grants us and our nearby allies a chance to impale on hit and increased impale effect. It also greatly reduces enemy accuracy, increasing our survivability. Banner gains up to 50 stages, gaining a stage each time we impale an enemy up to five times a second. Banner can be placed by pressing the banner button for almost a minute of duration, granting us Fortify. Increased Fortify effect increases AoE and Aura effect. Fourth gem is Blood and Sand, a stunned spell that has two stage which grants us with two different sets of bonuses. In Blood Stands we are granted with more area damage and in exchange have less AoE. In Sand Stands these are reverted, granting us with more AoE and less area damage. Our next falling is the movement and first totem setup. Leap Slam is the movement powerhouse in this build. It is an exertable melee slam type attack that allows for jumping over obstacles and packs and overall fast movement without cooldown. With Rage granting us a ton of movement and attack speed, Leap Slam can be used to traverse maps like no other skill can. Upon landing near an enemy, Leap Slam stuns them and deals AoE damage. Leap Slam can also be situationally used on bosses for crowd control purposes. If you use a gem of phantasmal quality, it grants even more attack speed with the skill itself. However, in our setup, it is linked to faster attack support, which grants linked skills with increased attack speed with no downsides. Our next linked skill is Ancestral Protector Totem, a skill that places a damaging ally that grants us with more attack speed while it is active, meaning a totem icon in our left upper corner of buff effects. Default quality adds increased damage to the totem itself, but Phantasmal quality grants an increased buff effect, which is very useful and is advised, though not required. The fourth link gem is Culling Strike, granting link skills with increased damage and killing enemies instantly on hits with link skills if the said enemy is at 10% life or below. A great support skill to finish off a pesky boss or additional adds that got lost behind all the loot you will be getting. The last bit of gear contains our cast when damage taken and Val Ancestral Warchief setup. First and most important gem is Immortal Call. It's a god spell skill gem that removes all endurance charges on use but in return makes us take much less damage. But instead of maximum level, we will be running it on a flexible level to be able to trigger it with our gem link cast when damage taken. Cast when damage taken will have to be of a flexible level depending on the amount of our armor. For example, with 11,000 armor, I suggest cast when damage taken level 8 and immortal call level 10, triggering at 1,107 life, a bit above 10% of our armor value, meaning some small armor mitigated damage will not trigger our cast when damage taken setup, saving a cooldown and endurance charges. Next link is life tap, which makes all link skills use life instead of mana. It's great to have cast when damage taken setups rely on life instead of mana, making them work 100% of the time. The four socket takes a specific Val Ancestral Warchief. It is yet another totem that we will use to buff us. We will be using only the specific Val portion of the skill, which bypasses the limit of one totem placed. When Val Ancestral Warchief is placed, it grants us with more melee damage. And this wraps up our gem links, so we can freely move into the defining part of the build, the gear. Disclaimer. The gear in POB is divided into multiple grades with several price groups, with maximum optimized gear being nothing more than a collection of most useful mods, regardless of price. Usually, the exact same gear can amount up to hundreds of exalts, but it is there for consulting mod list purposes. The main part of this build is the unique shield red blade banner. It is available from level 35 
and has an interesting feature that was previously mentioned. It makes all war cries calculate at maximum power, meaning always giving us maximum rage, endurance charges, in case of enduring cry, 30% of overwhelm physical damage reduction of intimidating cry, and of course, maximum critical strike chance of battle mage cry. It also has two mods that synergize very well with our built war cry cooldown recovery speed, meaning all our war cries will have significantly shorter cooldown and 20% increased taunt duration, meaning our taunted enemies will take 5% increased damage from natural authority notable skill for longer. Acquisition-wise, there are ways to farm Red Blade Banner yourself. First would be farming Lighthouse map. It is always has a Red Blade Warband boss, who has a chance to drop a Warband League related unique. Next will be Aina with best aircraft of unique shield or chanced via chance ops from painted tower shield of item level 35 and above. Finally, it can be chanced with existing League mechanics such as Gwenon in Expedition League. Our main hunt is an axe, preferably a good DPS base like Siege Axe or a Psychotic Axe, which has plus 10 maximum rage implicit, but it is rare. It comes from Heist, not very cheap, and will be even more expensive with good mods. Here's where differences between Resolute Technique and Endgame Crit version start. For starter, Resolute Technique version, only mods you need are percent increased physical damage, flat physical damage and attack speed. For the crit version, we will be adding accuracy, critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier to our X. At level 95, an amount of total 3000 accuracy is required to have 100 hit chance for crit version, which we will be getting from our X, jewelry and our glows. Next is our helmet. Both versions of the build use a cheap Abyssus unique helmet. In exchange, for massive increase of physical damage taken, we are getting a good chunk of attributes, armor, the biggest single item melee crit multiplier, and an added flat physical damage to attacks. This helmet alone almost doubles our DPS, certainly a best in slot item. However, the most important role on buying or divining an abyssus is the percent of increased physical damage taken. It ranges from 40 to 50 percent and is a massive hole in our defenses. While it is very fitting to the berserker theme of the build, I strongly recommend getting a lowest 40 percent roll. Possible alternate options are either a well rolled rare with life resistances and armor or a crown of inward eye unique helmet that comes from Cirrus. The best, and I would dare to say, the only acceptable helmet enchant is Rage Vortex sacrifices plus 5% of rage. It is a huge DPS boost, only second to equipping an Abyssus itself and granting us with up to 10% more DPS in certain situations. For our chest piece, which houses our Rage Vortex setup, we are opting for a rare chest, preferably an astral plate with required resistances in life. Best in slot for both builds would be a hunter influenced chest with you can apply an additional curse and later we will discuss which ones and how and for the crit version as budget allows you would want another hunter mod attacks have plus percent to critical strike chance while it's a small number it is applied to base critical chance meaning it will get all increases from gear skills and tree granting our rage vortex with a huge crit chance boost unique alternatives in order from DPS to defenses are Lore Weave, Carcass Jack, Ambush Charge, a Belly of the Beast, the biggest life boost from a chest piece. Our next slot is Gloves, preferably Spiked Gloves, with the implicit of increased melee damage. Other than life and needed resistances, you should be looking for a attack speed mod, which will further boost our already immense DPS, and possibly an accuracy mod, if the need arises. Unique options are Great Old One's Tentacles or Phase Breakers, due to Crit Multi for Crit version. The abundance of Phase Breakers lets us find ones with a cheap corruption of Curse enemies with vulnerability on hit corrupt, or double corrupt with the said vulnerability, and plus percent to attack critical chance, further boosting and maybe even capping our critical chance. Best in slot will be Hands of High Templar, with level to socketed gems, aura gems, critical strike chance, vulnerability on hit, percentage life. They will be very expensive, but they are best in slot. Try to find vulnerability corrupt first. 
Remember, you can color and socket corruptor gloves with Benchcraft with Val Orbs. Best lab enchants for gloves are Commandment of Winter, Frost and Spite to chill our enemies on being hit, of Light for Consecrated Ground for life regeneration, or of Reflection, which will summon a ghost minion of your character equipped with a copy of your weapon, which will be attacking enemies and distracting them from you. Boot slot is occupied by yet another rare, preferably a two-tone base with life and resistances. If you need more dexterity, try to look for strength, dexterity bases, as only dex base can naturally roll a dexterity suffix. Best in slot of course would be a well-crafted rare with Tailwind on crit. Unique replacements are Wanderlust and Victorious Flight. Possible corrupts are Max Life, AoE and our duration gem levels. Best in slot lab enchant is 16% increase attack speed if you killed recently. Second best is 120% increased critical chance if you haven't crit recently. Moving on to our jewelry. Our amulet should be a rare with a base of dexterity with life and resistances. Flat physical damage to attacks is good for both builds, while critical strike chance and multiplier is useful for the crit version. Unknown slaughter for the non-crit and feller of foes for the crit variant of the build. Unique options a Hurious Truth or Carnage Heart from leveling. Our rings should be well rolled rares with life, resistances and flat physical damage for both variants. For the critical variant, one of them should be a Shaper Influence Ring with trigger a level 8 or 12 Assassin's Mark when you hit a rare or unique enemy, which boosts our critical chance and grants life and mana on killing marked enemy. Powerful alternatives among unique rings are Lee Hoop of All, Death Rush or Romero's Banquet for Crit variant. A well rolled and moderately expensive Circle of Guilt with Herald of Purity buff effect and physical damage while affected by said Herald, Herald of Purity reservation or physical damage reduction as a defensive option. Prioritize getting accuracy, life and resistances once again. Remember, you need 3 thousand accuracy to cap your hit chance. Our best in slot belt is the bear's girdle unique belt for yet another source to increase our maximum rage. Additionally, applying crushed to nearby enemies, reducing their physical damage reduction. Your belt lab enchant should be 2% life on kill while you have rage, or armor while having fortify for more defenses. Budget options would be a well-rolled rare leather belt or stygian vise with life, resistances, attributes, or a variety of mods like flask effect, attack speed while flask is active, less damage taken during flask effect, flask charge on crit, or flask Masks have a chance to not consume charges. Abusal jewels for Studio Wise is generic life, physical damage with attacks, axe attacks, physical damage, critical stats, needed attributes, possibly with the following corruption such as corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you, overwhelm percent of physical damage reduction, additional crit stats or cannot be silenced. Alternatively, you can roll for an Elder mod with a level 22 early in cry skill to add to our DPS numbers even more. At the trade-off of having yet another button to juggle. Headhunter viability. This build, while being able to benefit from generic headhunter buffs like attack speed and damage, life, energy shield, will only walk half of the time because we are limited by warcry cooldowns. Also, it does not give us maximum rage, so proceed at your own risk. I would not advise using headhunter in this build. Now, flasks. For the life, we will need to pick a panicked divine flask of staunching. Divine Flask is better here, it has more total life restored with longer duration, but as we are cutting down duration by making it instant with panicked prefix, it's a fair trade-off. We are normally healed by Leech anyway, so it is yet another panic button. Other flasks are Lion's Roar, Ample Basalt, Experimenter's Granite and Quicksilver. Suffixes of Heat or Warden and any other offensive or defensive options you feel necessary. For the crit build, I would recommend using Surgeon's prefix for flasks. Make our flasks almost always have charges while the rage storm is spinning on the enemy. Diamond, with best in slot suffix being a crafted critical chance one of the order from unveiling Cinder Swallow urn flasks. Caru's blood of forbidden taste when instilling orb on savage hit. Consider having a spare set of flasks with experimenter's prefix or harvest enchanting with maximum uses. Full on boss fights like Elder. Uber Elder, Cirrus, Shaper or Maven. Another powerful yet expensive option is a Bottled Faith. Alternatives are Rumi's Concoction for a block-based build, Rhythm Jar with Max Uses Harvest Enchant for bossing for on-kill effects from Boots Enchant and also it helps to trigger Herald. Skill Tree. 
Important note. Skill tree is treating resolute technique as a starting endgame tree for the build with critical variant as the endgame target tree. First, our ascendancy is Berserker, where we'll be picking in order of importance. Warbringer for access to rage generation with Warcry's and exerted attacks damage every time our Warcry spend rage. Crave the slaughter for maximum rage and its consecutive note Rite of Ruin for stun avoidance while well, we have at least 25 rage and tripling our inherent rage effects which will be attack speed, attack damage and movement speed. Ultimately, we should be picking Aspect of Carnage a truly insane damage node granting us with 40% more damage in exchange of 10% increased damage of all types taken. It's a big trade-off which can lead to sudden one-shots, so a more defensive option would be to take Flawless Savagery instead of Aspect of Carnage and possibly even picking Blitz instead of Right of Ruin if further defensive options are desired. For the tree, we will be grabbing as many life and defensive notables we can, while pathing towards damage and warcry notables. You should be resolute technique by the first lap. Additionally, investing in a variety of warcry notables like Admonisher, which serves as our best tool for removing ailments with each warcry. Purely offensively, we will be using Harvester of Force, Hatchet Master, Berserking, Forceful Skewering and Natural Authority to make our enemies weak and make them take more damage. Alternatively, you can pick Slaughter Notable, though you may have this annoyed on your amulet slot already, increasing our damage and granting us Onslaught for 4 seconds on kill, freeing up a flask slot. When transitioning to Critical Strike variant of the build, we repath through Diamond Skin to compensate for inevitable loss of many resistance mods on gear and saving quite a few skill points in the process to spend on disemboweling and dismembering notables. We add hematophagy to compensate for defense and life loss with more leech and damage while leeching and adding powerful accuracy, attack speed and critical stats notables as eagle eye and versatility. The best and biggest pair point damage boost in this build is Panopticon, a totem buff notable. It will increase the effect of ancestral totem buffs by 50%, making it an invaluable investment. It requires pathing 5 hops out of the way of our standard tree, so we will be economizing these with a thread of hope unique jewel, which leads us to the jewel section. The aforementioned thread of hope unique jewel that drops from Cirrus is a flexible jewel that allows us to pick notables in a ring around the jewel slot without connecting them to the skill tree in exchange of lowered resistances. A very good trade-off to save more than 20 skill points we would be otherwise using to path. We will be needing one with only effects passives in large ring with as low a roll on the reduction of resistances as you can afford. Remember, divining it changes the ring size, so be careful. By allocating in the slot near Golem's Blood Notable, we will be picking up previously mentioned Panopticon, along with Swift Skewering, Hatchet Master Notable, and Art of Gladiator Notable, which will remove the 3% movement penalty of fairing a chest piece, add more attack speed and accuracy, plus 20 dexterity points. We also should be adding cluster jewels to the build, with large cluster jewel of preferably 9 points or less, with 12% increased attack damage while holding a shield as a base, and rolling or buying 3 best in slot notables on it. Feed the fury for even more damage and attack speed while leeching with life leech. Fuel the fight notable for damage, attack speed and mana leech, and martial prowess notable for accuracy, damage and attack speed. For cheaper options, consider using cluster jewel bases of generic attack damage, action sword damage, or even mason staff damage, which are inferior in damage per small passive skill, but still provide the needed notables. The absolute must are medium cluster jewels, which we will be picking as exerted attacks deal 20% increased damage base of 5 points or less, with notables mob mentality and lead by example. This is the only combination of notables we want. The former will be granting us endurance, frenzy and power charges when we walk right, while the latter is our main source of onslaught. This cluster jewel is expensive and hard to roll, but is pivotal to the upper end power of this build. A budget alternative would be the use of two medium cluster jewels with combination of one of the aforementioned notables on a duel 
coupled with another less expensive notable such as hunting shout, rattling below, provocateur or warning call. Replica Concours efficiency, a haste replica series jewel, is a must-have. It lowers our mana consumption, enabling the chaining of leap slams and adds plus 5 to maximum rage, which is a huge boost to our damage capabilities. Also, it slightly increases our skill effect duration, which is useful for immortal call and phase run. Ultimately, we could benefit a lot from a lethal pride timeless duel with a Koya mod, which drops from Domain of Timeless Conflict. It is a duel which will transform keystones and add useful stats to notables affected in its radius. Slotting it above Juggernaut Notable, you should look for melee crit chance, melee crit multiplier, double damage, reduced critical strike damage taken, melee damage additions. It can be divined, changing the seed number and what it gives to the notables, but that can change the mod name and even dual type. So instead of divining, I suggest using a trick. The trick consists of buying these in bulk and slotting sequentially, trying to find a useful one and then selling the rest. Keep the cycle of buying, testing and selling until you find the one that is perfect for your needs. Pantheon and Bandits For mapping, the best pick is fully upgraded Lunaris for the additional physical damage reduction, projectile avoidance and reduced elemental damage taken, with minor gods being Yugul or Gruthgul for Hex Reflect and additional damage reduction respectively. For bossing, I prefer fully upgraded Solaris, very powerful defensive pantheon paired with Ruislata as minor god. Bandits on League Start help Alira or kill all if on softcore trade league. Leveling is quite simple. I suggest using Splitting Steel paired with Chance to Bleed and Onslaught for duration of Act 1, paired with biggest physical damage to Hand Sword or Arcs you can find, swapping it for Shattering Steel when available from Nessa in Act 1, all the way to the Blade Storm, which will be rewarded to you by Maramoa in Act 3 after dispatching Griffithius, somewhere about level 28. I would recommend using Blade Storm all the way to Act 6 using the following suggested links that you can find in the POB's leveling section and switching to Rage Vortex after unlocking Gem Vendor Lily in Act 6, being able to purchase all the recommended gem links. For the leveling gear, I suggest using either Solar Cell Found gear with life and resistances, upgrading it each act, or a variety of Twink unique leveling gear like Wanderlust, Lactonial Caress, Tabula Rasa, Goldrim, Worms Molt, then upgrading to the Magnet Belt, Carnage Heart Amulet with two Le Hoop of All Rings, capping our resistances until the switch to the actual build or until maps. Well, this wraps up our build guide. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will enjoy playing Berserker Rage Vortex as much as I did, be it my build guide or many others, like Badger's Guide or Myself's. Void Forge Rage Vortex Guide and its hardcore variant by Search Engine, bless his crazy soul, with his champion Chain Breaker build, all of which were of great influence on making my own build and will be linked below. In the end, I want to thank in no particular order some of my fellow guild members and gamers who helped me a lot with this guide, with proofreading and fact checking, mechanics help, build insight and being a general positive influence in my Path of Exile experience. Alan Tor. Search Engine, Zerks, Miss Broccoli, Oxybells, Rodent, Zero Misu, Jockmaster Flex, Deep Hole, Not Very Much Oats, and many others. Isoro for being an inspiration for this build guide and engineering explain for helping understand the many intricate game mechanics. Special mention goes to Katya for impeccable chat moderation. Without you, our lives would have been boring and small. Oh, you're still here. I would like to thank you for watching this guide in its entirety. I would love to read your comments and thoughts on this build and this guide format. I actually had to cut the guide almost in half to be able to cram it in less time. Press the dislike button if you didn't like my terrible accent. Or consider subscribing for upcoming build guides with similar depth, build guide compilations, league start suggestions and more. Stay sane, exiles.